Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to cover well water equipment. Are you on a home well water system? Have you looked at the equipment and wondered what it's actually doing? Today, I'll go through the typical well water system here where I live in Florida. In Florida, there are two choices for water city water or well water. From a strict water perspective, there is no difference between them. They both take water from an underground aquifer. On the city water system, the advantage to you is they treat the water before delivering it. On the other hand, they charge you by the gallon to do so. It can be pretty expensive. With a well system, there is no direct charge for water, but treatment is your responsibility and it does come with a cost. However, all of that is a discussion for another day. Today, we're going to talk about the equipment and how it works. Here we have a graphical overview of a home well water system. There are four basic parts a wellhead pump electrical connections to the pump, pipes to move the water to the house, and house-side well equipment to process and move the water into the house. It's a fairly simple system. The wellhead is the component that connects to the below-ground aquifer. A drill hole is sunk into the ground to reach the water below. Within the pipe, an electrical submersible pump is placed. When energized, the pump races the water through the pipe to the surface. From there, water is sent to the home well processing equipment, typically located next to the house. Not a requirement, but it is common practice. The receiving equipment manages water pressure and the movement of water into the house. Now let's take a look at the well equipment at the house. At the house, the well equipment system is made up of several components, including piping and electrical wiring to the water pumps. Your system, like my own, may have additional equipment in addition to what you see here. We'll take a look at those in just a moment. But first, let's step through the basic equipment. First is the holding tank, basically a storage tank to hold the water brought up from the aquifer. Within the holding tank are three components, a submersible water pump, a water flow control valve, which is basically an on-off valve, and a float. The float is connected to the control valve with a metal arm. When the water lowers, the float lowers with it. The arm opens the valve, allowing water to enter the tank. When the water raises to the desired level, the float arm closes the valve. Next is the pressure tank. A house pressure system, either an electrical pump or an air bladder system like the one shown here, is required to provide water pressure in the house. In this diagram, you see a common air bladder pressure system. The air bladder is inflated to a specific pressure, just like the tire pressure on your car. For the water system, this is typically 35 psi, or 35 pounds per square inch of pressure. But note, it could be higher on your system. Water entering the pressure tank is resisted by the inflated airbag. This back pressure is the water pressure at the faucet in the house. And lastly, we have the electrical control system, the pressure switch. The pressure switch senses the pressure in the water line to determine when to electrically activate the water pumps. There are two pressure switches. Switch 1 controls the wellhead pump, and switch 2 controls the holding tank pump. Now let's step through the components and see how they function. You may have noticed there are actually two water systems at work here. System 1 brings water to the holding tank. System 2 moves the water into the house. The two systems are not connected together. The common component is the holding tank. In this drawing, I've included the electrical wires for the pressure switch. Each of these is wired to a standard on-off light switch to allow manual control of the system. I'll explain as we go. In this example, you can see the water lines are empty. Without water pressure, both pressure switches are on, sending electricity to the pumps. Since the holding tank is empty at the moment, we don't want to run the holding tank pump and risk damaging it without water. We use the manual switch to keep it off until it's needed. The well pump is switched on. Water is brought from the aquifer to the holding tank. The float rises with the rising water and cuts off incoming water flow once the preset target is reached. We now have a full tank of water. To send water to the house, we turn on the tank pump. The pump moves the water into the house distribution piping. This process also fills the pressure tank. Note, your system may use an electric pump to create water pressure in the house. As the pump fills the house pipes, it also fills the pressure tank, squeezing the air bladder inside. The airbag resists being squeezed and pushes back. This continues until the water pressure reaches the target pressure, Again, typically 35 psi. Once reached, the pressure switch turns off the holding tank pump, but the pressure in the line remains. It's the airbag pressing against the water that creates the water pressure at the faucet in the house. 
When you open the faucet, the pressure tank bladder squeezes the water, allowing it to flow at the faucet. This in turn lowers the line pressure, which is sensed by pressure switch 2. It activates the holding tank pump to maintain pressure and flow from the holding tank. As you continue your shower, the holding tank is being depleted. The holding tank float descends as the water level lowers, opening the water flow valve to refill the tank. Pressure switch 1 senses a line pressure drop and turns on the well pump head to refill the holding tank. The holding tank is continually refilled so you don't run out of water in the shower. A simple, clever little system. Depending upon how much money you spent installing the well water system at your house will influence the amount of equipment you'll find in the, quote, typical home system. This is a diagram of the system we found at our house when my wife and I moved in. As you can see, there's a bit more here. Notable are the two pressure tanks, one sitting on the well side of the system, the other on the house side of the system. This is because there is a yard sprinkler system installed in my house. The additional pressure tank is used to pressurize the outside watering system. Additionally, there is a water softener and a carbon water polisher on the house side of the system. I also have a chlorine injection system, which treats the water, keeping it safe to drink. You may have one of these as well, or other additions to your system. Well, that's it for this video. I thank you for watching. I truly do. But hang on. Wait, there's more. Actually, it's a bit of shameless self-promotion. I have a book series that you might enjoy. A book series of the William Johnson family. Who is William Johnson, you ask? Well, that is to be discovered in the first book, titled, What Did You Do in the War? But I'll give you a hint. It involves an invasion, aliens, and a rather innocent Private William Johnson, who is thrown into the conflict to emerge, the hero of the world. Told in his own words, for him, it's an event that has never faded and still has an impact upon his life. That's followed by, Come With Me If You Want to Live, Black Hole Theory, Retribution, and the finale in the series, Discovery. Adventure, intrigue, government cover up, it's in there. Available in soft cover, ebook, and audiobook. And a final plug there's a separate short story collection called Life's Journey. Find them under my author name, R. E. Link. I thank you again.